Hey, what's going on, Facebook? Good morning. Um, I pray that you're having a great morning so far. It is uh, 748, and um, thank God my kids are still asleep. Uh, my daughter, uh, Jada, has school in the afternoon, and uh, Candace does not have school today, and is still asleep, so I figure I will take a few minutes to do this. This is just day number two of my commitment to um, produce content of some kind. Uh, at least five days a week. So um, I have thoughts that have been in my head for a long time. And I've been in my own head doubting myself and doubting the validity of what I'm saying and doubting the value of what God has placed in me. Uh, and, and I'm just being very honest with you when I say that. So uh, this is just me getting out of my head and getting the things that are in my head out and seeing who can be blessed by them. I um uh, saw a few people's responses, a few of your responses yesterday uh, to, to, to my video, and um, I appreciate it, and uh, I'm just going to keep doing um, what God has called me to do. Um, I cannot get off of the point, start um, where you are with what you have, start where you are with what you have. I cannot get off that point, and so I'm going to just keep hammering it home. Start where you are with what you have. Uh, it's so easy, you know, we... Um, you know, we get on social media and we start looking at other people's stuff and we start looking at other people's videos, their, 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 their pictures. We start looking at other people's stuff and um, we either get encouraged by what they're doing or discouraged. We get discouraged when we try to compare what other people are doing to what we're doing or not doing or what we're supposed to be doing and are procrastinating on. We get encouraged when we see people doing things and we know that God has called us to do something and we know that whether our time has or has not come yet, then we know that that time is coming and we can be happy for other people because uh, we're, we're, we're glad about what God is doing in other people's lives and we know that uh, our time is coming. But it's so easy to slip from a place of encouragement to a place of discouragement. And so I just want to uh, encourage you all today, you know, when, when you see people uh, 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 accomplishing things and when you see people doing things that you think you ought to be doing um, the, the the way to not be discouraged by that or the way to uh, not slip into envy or jealous jealousy because of that is to start with where you are with what you have and do what it is that you're called to do <laughs> and uh, it, it, it starts with doing the little things first and once you conquer the little things then going on to bigger things I'm trying to conquer the little things right now. The little things like being more consistent with the content that I'm producing on a daily basis. The little things like making sure that I am uh, being more consistent with daily habits, with uh, you know waking up on time, which is one thing that I used to do. I used to wake up, let me tell you all, when I wrote my book, Rebuild, last year, um, I was waking up every day at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, E.T. the hip-hop preacher, Dr. Eric Thomas, was one of my huge influences when I was um, getting this book done. And I was able to wake up at 3 every single morning because cause that's what he talks about, uh, something that he did uh, every day was wake up at 3 o'clock every single morning. And, he, and he's been doing that for a number of years. Well, I was able to do that for a number of months. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to keep that up, but I was doing it for a number of months. And I used to, when I wrote that book... I wrote that I wrote that book from beginning to end, from start to publish in 90 days, and I was able to do that because of the consistency of waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning with that one basic habit of waking up early and writing from 3 in the morning until 8 in the morning every single day before everybody got up, before the day got started. I was able to get in there and, and get that done. And uh, it, it just starts with doing the little things, and once you do the little things, then you can then then you can move mountains. Once you uh, start with the little things, then you can you can move the boulders, and you can move those things in your life that have been um, that that have been tripping you up for a long time. And I've been been in a place where I have not been doing all that I've been called to do. I have not been uh, living up to the promises that I've made to myself, and so. Uh, this is me, and this video is part of me right now getting back to a place where I am st striving to be more consistent and doing the things uh, that I need to be doing. Dwayne Davis, what's going on, sir? Good to see you uh, this morning. Uh, I appreciate you uh, listening in. So, like I said, just me being more consistent 
and me doing the things that I know that I need to do to move forward in my life, move forward in my ministry, uh, move forward uh, in my business. Um, I'm coming out with another book uh, next year. Probably this is May. I have not put an official date on it, but it's going to be uh, a year from now. I'm, I'm going to say right now that uh, we're, we're looking at probably June of next year where we're going to be coming out with uh, the, 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 the second book. And so even now, even though we're a full 12 months away, I know that I need to uh, be more consistent with that and uh, waking up early and writing a little bit every single day is part of what it takes, part of that consistency that it takes to uh, to get that done. And so uh, and, and, and doing videos and producing content on a daily basis and getting out of my head, like I said before, is also a part of uh, that consistency and doing the things that uh, I'm called to do. So again, I'm starting with what I starting where I am with what I have. And what I have is what God has placed in me. And where I am is just me trying to be consistent again. I just want to read something for you real quick um, just to encourage you this morning. And uh, I'm not even going to read the whole thing, but um, I saw an article on Medium, medium medium.com, the other day. It's called Professionals versus amateurs professionals versus amateurs and it's written by uh Shrenivas Rao and um I'm not gonna read the whole thing but one of the most important things that he said in there and um I, I scrolled away from it and um here it is right here um he again this is uh, amateurs per, uh, versus professionals and so he's he's talking about what amateurs do and then what professionals do and why professionals are able to have more success and why professionals are able to be more legitimate than amateurs um uh, one thing he says is the amateur tries to change everything at once the professional changes one habit at a time the amateur shows up on occasion the professional shows up every day. I'm just going to read that part again. Uh, it, it, it's a it, it's a longer article. Um, it's not that long, but 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 it's longer than what I just read. But anyway, I'm going to read that one more time. The amateur tries to change everything at once. The professional changes one habit at a time. The amateur shows up on occasion. The professional shows up every day. And so the one habit that I'm trying to change. Uh, is uh, getting back to the habit of waking up at a certain time and producing some kind of content every day, getting out of my head and taking what's in my head and putting it onto paper, taking what's in my head and, and, and recording it, whether it's audio, video, or doing something to make what God has called me to do, what God has placed in my head, making it tangible. And that's one thing that I'm doing uh, every single day and uh, exactly show up every single day. Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to do to go from amateur to professional in some of the things that I'm doing and taking myself more seriously. I allowed myself to get in my head too long to where I wasn't producing any kind of content. And I shared in a video yesterday, and you might be able to go back and uh, and, and, and look at that if you want to. Uh, I had shared yesterday that um, I had lots of trouble uh, really producing content because I was doubting whether or not what I had to say um, really meant anything to anybody, whether it was what God had uh, given me was um, going to have any kind of value in the marketplace. I had allowed myself to, uh, to, 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 to doubt. I had doubted myself and I had allowed the enemy to get in my head. And so I was producing content. I was doing videos. I was, um, I, I was doing audio. I was writing things, but you never saw any of that. Because um, I would write stuff, I would delete it, I would do videos, I would throw them away. Uh, like literally, these were things that that, that 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 I've been doing over the past you know six to nine months. And I said, you know what? It doesn't matter anymore. I can't wait until uh, I, I do something that I think is like studio quality or something that I think is um, you know massive or something that I think is going to reach the nations. I can't wait until I do that in order, in order for me to do something in the first place. You know, and that's the beauty of um, being able to use a platform like Facebook Live. You know, anybody is a broadcaster today, and anybody who um, is, a, is a is a pastor should be really encouraged by 
uh, a platform like this. The fact that you can use Facebook Live, that, that any user can use Facebook Live and can do a video just like that, and the fact that um, any page, any business page on Facebook can use Facebook Live now, every church, every pastor is now a broadcaster. There's no excuse anymore for uh, a, a church not to be able to get onto this platform and begin to share their worship experiences uh, with uh, the nations. There's no excuse for that anymore, you know, because we, we, we all have the technology now. You don't have to spend uh, five ten thousand uh, dollars on equipment if you don't have it. You can use what you have to, to, to broadcast. You can start where you are with what you have. And as God grows your ministry and as God favors you, then you can begin to go back and can, and can buy the other things uh, that you need to be able to take that to the next level. But while you have the basic technology, get out there and do it. It's all about starting um, where you are with what you have. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this video uh, short. And the, the, the scripture that was really on my heart for this morning was Nehemiah chapter 1, when you're talking about starting where you are with what you have. I'm not even going to read it right now. Maybe I'll do another video later. Uh, maybe tomorrow uh, or maybe later on about Nehemiah chapter 1. That's, Nehemiah is one of my favorite books of the Bible just because of um, Nehemiah saw a need. And um, he was in a, living in a very comfortable place, but he saw a need and he knew that he needed to meet that need. Because that burden was on his heart. And he started where he was with what he had. And he was able to, uh, to, to, to help rebuild the wall uh, in his hometown. And he didn't just ignore the problems that were going on uh, from where he lived. But, but he decided to, uh, to, to, to use the influence that he had and the leadership ability that he had to, uh, to, to go back and to fix his hometown. Uh, Capri, I appreciate you, bro. Um, but I'm going to read that later. I'm not even going to read that right now. But what what I will leave you with is um, this quote from uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle out of um, uh, Life Church, Life dot Church, um, out in uh, Oklahoma, I believe. And he says um, people would rather have a leader who is always real than one who is always right. People would rather have a leader who is always real than one who is always right. So a lot of times we think that, uh, you know, this, this whole leadership thing can be very, really complicated. And whether you're a leader of a church or you're just a leader in your house, you know, um, you know we, we, we all have sources of conflict and we all, um, you know, we all doubt ourselves and we all have big decisions that we have to make at times. And uh, leadership can be very, very, very challenging, but one place that you could always start from, again, we're talking about starting where you are with what you have, and one place that you could always start is by being real, and it, 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 you may not make the right decision all the time. I know that uh, even in my ministry, in my leadership, I have not made the right decision every single time, but nobody can can, can go back and, and, and check the record. Nobody can go back and look at the course of my ministry and say that I have not always been real. And that's one thing that, if nothing else, that that's going to always be my commitment to you and uh, to everybody else that God has given me to influence. I'm going to always be real. I'm going to always be authentic because that's all that I have. And um, I'm going to leave you with that today. People would rather have a leader who is always real than one who is always right. Again, that's Craig Groeschel out of Life Church, Life Dot Church, uh, out of Oklahoma. So God bless you, and I pray that you have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day. Thank you for listening in, and um, I pray that you will share this. Uh, bless you, Dwayne. Uh, bless you, um, Davis, man. I appreciate you. All right, man, have a wonderful day. God bless.